Welcome to an IGET concept module. IGET is a National Science Foundation funded project to support remote sensing education. This module actually is in two parts. This is part one of a module that looks at going from a digital number to top of reflectance to account for Earth's sun geometry. Landsat is a passive remote sensing system and needs an energy source to capture any reflectance data. The sun provides the radiance or the energy, solar irradiance energy, for its collection of data by the Landsat platform. Five interactions are possible when solar irradiance energy interacts with an object in the Earth's atmosphere. It can be transmitted through an object. It can be absorbed by an object, such as an atom or molecule in the atmosphere or on the ground. It can be scattered by those same molecules and atoms in the atmosphere. And it can be reflected, so an object can be uh, absorbed part of it and reflect part of the wavelength. Solar irradiance can also be re-emitted. This is showing how it's re-emitted by different um, objects. And it's re-emitted usually at a lower wavelength than is heat or thermal energy. We're going to really concentrate or focus on the reflected energy from uh, different objects on the Earth's surface by Landsat. How is this data that's captured uh, presented? Well, it's presented as a brightness value or a digital number that reflects that brightness value. This is an image from Landsat where you can see different shades of gray or brightness. Lance, this is a Landsat 4 brightness and digital number example. So we have Landsat 5 band 4 and I can zoom in, looks like a building to me, and as I zoom in further I can see a 30 by 30 meter pixel which has a brightness or digital number of 254. Software is used to combine the digital number values for different wavelengths and visualize them as a composite image. So that's an image with more than one wavelength being uh, visualized. You need three wavelengths and they're displayed as red, green, and blue. And you can have different outputs than as composites. These are three images that have been composited, a true, a false, and a pseudo uh, image. There are many more, but each of the Landsat missions does use different wavelengths to produce these uh, composites. Brightness numbers are also different in the Landsat missions. Uh, say Landsat 5 and 7 uses digital numbers from 0 to 255, with 0 and 255 reserved to fill gaps. Landsat 8 uses digital numbers valued from between 0 and 4095, that are even rescaled to 55,000 gray levels. Just remember the brighter the pixel, the higher the digital number. Why would we want to know anything about the digital number or converting and correcting these? Well, the digital numbers are based on the solar irradiance energy on the date of collection. And the sun and earth geometry actually affects how much solar energy is available to be collected. These two uh, geometries are the distance of the Earth from the Sun and the angle of incidence of solar irradiance. The average distance uh, is from the, the Earth from the Sun is 93 million miles, and this uses a, uh, an astronomical unit, which is that average distance. You can see that when we're closest to the Sun, we're less than one astronomical unit, and we're farthest from the Sun, we have a slightly greater uh, value, 1.034 astronomical units. Also note that uh, this uh, schematic is not to scale. So why is it colder in the northern hemisphere even though the Earth is closer to the Sun in January? Well, look at uh, the tilt of the Earth. We're going to look at that and how it affects the amount of energy. The Earth is actually tilted on its axis approximately 23.4393 degrees. So the sun's rays in January are coming in at an angle, where in June and July the sun's angles are more directly into the northern hemisphere. Think about a flashlight. You have a flashlight bulb and you fly, fly, uh, shine it on a wall directly. It will have a, a certain area that that bulb illuminates. Tilt that flashlight up toward the ceiling, and as you get more and more tilt, the area that that 
light bulb illuminates is spread over a larger area. So direct rays actually just have more energy per unit area, where the tilter rays have less area, less energy per unit area. This is another diagram illustrating the same sort of principle, and it's taken either in early spring or early autumn and looks at the solar rays. You can see in these dates that the direct rays are coming into the equator, and the longer rays at A are uh, being spread over a larger area, much like our flashlight flash bulb look. Note too that the rays travel through less Earth's atmosphere at A, more of the Earth's atmosphere at A than at B. So when we want to use Landsat imagery, we really should collect for these differences in energy available. So think about land use change over a period of time when you're using two different dates. They may have very different energy values. Pre and post events such as for fires or natural or man-made disasters also need to be corrected. Often your project needs more than one Landsat image and you have to mosaic two together. If they came on different dates and different paths and rows, you should correct those values too so that you're consistent across your project. Software and methods and equations to do this are different for different Landsat measures. It's really a two-step process to go from digital numbers to uh, real values that are corrected for the Earth-Sun geometry. The first one actually takes those digital numbers and converts them back to the energy per unit area. Step two takes those converted values and corrects them for the Earth-Sun geometry. See part two of this module for details for correcting the images using ArcGIS test top and different equations for both Landsat 5 and Landsat 8. These are some questions I'd like you to take a look at. You can see these questions also in the About section. Here are some references also that are in the About section. Thank you.